Good to see you, Ademaya. The CEO of the Poplar Clinic in the Republic of Ghana. I am not the CEO. Hey. <laughs> My so brother sorry. is. My brother? Yes. Dr. Elikem Tamaklo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you have to do with the whole clinic? Because they led me to your house, you know. Well, we are both shareholders. So oh, we are okay. both the children of the founder. So Dr. Tamaklo mm -hmm. is not even the owner? Neither? Well, it's complicated because we are actually now owners since our father is, is not alive. And so his, his ownership has been passed down to us. So you your know. father started this? Yes. Which year? In 1970. Can you tell me more about your father? I really want to hear that. We can definitely do that. You want to sit down? Definitely. Let's do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I thought you were the CEO of Yahoo Clinic, mm -hmm. but since you are telling me that you are not the CEO, your brother too, your brother is the CEO right now. He is. But like I said, I'm not interested in you and your brother. Mm -hmm. I just want to know more about the founder of the famous Yahoo Clinic. Okay. Well, I mean, his story goes way back. I mean, how far do you want me to go? As far as you can. As far as I can. Okay. Thank you. So basically, he was born in Togo, and um, you know, he was in school, primary school, when he developed an infection in his right leg. You know, they took him to different places, herbalists and everything, but there was no cure until one day a French surgeon came and they actually had to put him down on the table. They had to give him a strong drink to operate on his leg and he was finally okay. And that is actually the moment in time he decided he wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So he then moved to Ghana and continued his education. Then he went for university. Um, University of Dublin, Ireland and during his time there there was one um, holiday break that he went to the UK and there he found a book it was the book of the Mayo Brothers of Mayo Clinic, Minnesota, USA and you know they have a concept of group medical practice and so he read this book and he was inspired he's like you know Ghana needs something like this where different doctors of various specialties come together under one roof you know to discover what really is the problem with somebody you know, so he decided at that point that he wanted to set up a clinic in Ghana. And that is really how Nyaho Clinic was born. So before he actually started the clinic, there was a whole 10 years before that, that he was in direct service to the nation. In fact, when he came from his studies in, in Dublin and then a little bit of work experience in the UK, immediately he was seconded to the Ghana Armed Forces to do, take up his medical practice at 37 Military Hospital. And in that same year, he was actually um, dispatched to the Congo because there was um, kind of a conflict going on there at the time. And um, so he was actually asked to join the surgical team in the, in the peacekeeping mission. Um, so he was there about two years and then he came back. Upon his arrival, he was again seconded to the British Army to take up postgraduate studies in surgery. Again, he was in the UK for another two to three years and then he was recalled because, you know, at this time, this is in the early 60s, you know, Ghana had gained independence and was now trying to really, you know, take a foothold of, of, of affairs. So the uh, government realized they wanted more representation of Ghanaians within its establishment. So he was immediately recalled to become commandant of 37. So that's why if you go to 37 right now, you'll see the Tamaklo Ward. And it was actually named after him because he, he was there as commandant for another five years. So all those 10 years was, was with 37 before um, Nyahu was actually founded in 1970. You said in the year 2001, that is when your daddy passed away. Exactly. Were you the one who took over from mm. the year 2001? No, not me at all. Um, my brother and I were still teenagers at the time. So it was my mom who took over. Your mom took over? Yep. Will I be able to speak to your mom? I'm sure she may be able to give you some time. Yep. Mommy. Yes. You know why I wanted to speak to you? Nope. <laughs> I believe that the recent success of Yahoo Clinic, mm -hmm. you need to get all the credit. That's why I was like, you know what? Enough of the talking with your children. I want to speak to you directly. <laughs> okay. I mean, what really happened? Like, when you took over without any medical background in the year 2001, what was going through your mind during that time? Well, um,. Let's say that uh, the late doctor was sort of 
because he had a heart condition. Um, he had had a bypass uh, some years back, and so he was sort of preparing. Um, he knew that any time he'd never know how long he was going to last. But then he sort of prepared the minds of the, the staff. He did not intentionally coach me, I'd say, but just due to the length of time I had gotten married and started working in the center. You know, I had worked in the different departments. And so I guess he was quite comfortable um, that I could handle things. You're working in the department as? The various departments. As what? Because you're not a doctor. You don't have any medical background. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, there is the support services. Oh, okay. You know, the administration, okay. the um, purchases of drugs and whatnot, mm. the housekeeping and all the other stuff. Um, I was, had worked in all those areas. The medical area was not my thing, of course. And so while he was responsible for the medical services um, department, um, when I took over, I had to employ a medical director. In fact, it was in his will. He actually stated that in the event of his passing, there had to be a medical director in place. So when I took over, I immediately with the board um, were able to employ a medical director. So the two of us were working together. Mm -hmm. And now your son has taken over. Because yeah, I, I spoke to him and he was telling me that now he's a medical doctor. But the time that daddy passed away, he was in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Both of them were in high school. How did you come about that? Hey, I need to let my son um, study medicine. No, yes. So that's the thing. Amazingly, things just worked out. I never pushed any of my kids to do medicine. Wow. Um, but the thing was that they just chose. My daughter chose um, management and um, my son chose medical school. So it sort of just fitted and worked out. I, I you know, <laughs> it was none of our doing. Yeah. I don't remember my late husband saying, you've got to do medicine. No, it just, they just felt um, that sense of responsibility to do certain subjects or go that professional uh, route. Now you've seen the sources of your whole clinic. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in Takradi. I'm I don't know. Oh, really? But I get the, like I keep on hearing your whole clinic, your whole clinic. That's why I had to come in here. Yeah. So how proud are you to see the success of your whole clinic since it took over? Yeah, I mean while I was working i didn't look back i didn't think about the center um while i was working but after when i retired um i realized that you know by god's grace we have been able to sustain the center into a relevant um um medical uh, service delivery and so i um with my son taking over and the reputation now you know i look back and i think we have come a long way and 50 years we have come a long way and we are still relevant in the medical system Dr. Temaklo, the current CEO of Nyaho Clinic. I mean, I spoke to your mom and she's so proud of you. 
and I just want to tell you that you've done an amazing job. But thank first you. of all, I just want to know why you decided to take over in the year 2015. Uh, well, thank you for that, and um, it's a pleasure to be here. I, actually, I didn't want to take over. I mean, my story started for me running away. I wanted to not have anything to do with my father's name because everyone thought, you know, I'm Dr. So and So's son, son. You know, you kind of want to make your own name. Exactly. So I studied medicine in the UK, I became a doctor, and I was going to work with Doctors Without Borders, um, working in, you know, rural areas or war torn areas. Mm -hmm. But then I went to the DRC and I realized that actually when you're dependent on charity, there's only so much you can do. Um, the people in that community need to be able to have um, businesses, sustainable jobs. And at the end of the day, as Africans, we are responsible for our destiny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I realized that, you know, my parents had built a foundation um, and I realized that there's a way of growing this in a, so that it can actually have a benefit. So I came to Ghana on holiday and then started thinking about what it would be like to move back and then I ended up coming back in 2015. You went to UK for school? Or? Yeah, so I went to medical school in the UK and then um, when I graduated I became um, a foundation, a house officer and then in the I, UK. in the UK, so and then... Which means that you never thought of coming back here? Um, I wasn't planning to. I was going to do emergency medicine. I wanted to save the world. I was more interested in going <laughs> to places that I thought needed me. Um, but then at the end of the day, your own country, your own place, um, I actually realized that we haven't done quality medicine yet. Even for everything that we've achieved in Yahoo, it's still not the level of care that people deserve. Mm. And I actually wanted to come back so that, you know, it doesn't matter whether you are in Ghana or whether in the States, you actually have the same chances of survival um, because of the healthcare system. I just want to know, Doc, what makes Yahoo Clinic so unique from other um, clinics in Ghana? Um, you know, what makes us special probably is that we started with strong foundations. Um, the founder started with um, a team and it became the first, it was the first group medical practice in the private sector. And he didn't do it by himself, he did it with a team. And so I think when I've looked at the last, you know, decades, five decades, we have 50 years, actually teamwork is what makes us special. Um, and actually we have uh, over 60 specialists um, who cut across all the main specialties, um, who are working in Ghana, they're normally heads of departments in different places. But then in addition to that, we also have about 30 doctors as well who are permanent doctors. Um, we have over um, 300 full-time employees. And so actually how to bring all of those people working together, um, that teamwork is really something that we are passionate about. And also I would say, I mean, really keeping that patient at the center, I can tell you that what, we are not perfect, but that there is a, we can do it. We just need to keep on improving. So we like to do the hard things. Like right now, we are, you know, the only um, private institution doing COVID testing and treatment. Wow. Um, and it's not because, you know, of anything apart from the fact that we saw what was needed. And we were like, we need, we are in the community. We need to actually address the needs of the community. We cannot run away from it. Mm. We need to face it. So I think that that's what makes it special. You know, like the main reason why I came here today is because of the healthcare system in Africa in general. Mm. So now we're in Ghana, let's talk about Ghana. Um, I just want to know, yeah, what are the kind of challenges that the healthcare system is facing in here? You know, the, the, the healthcare system in Ghana is great for many things because you know a lot of Ghanaian doctors were trained here and then went on and have done amazing things around the world. So it's not anything to do with the, how smart people are. But I think that the system is fragmented, fragmented in that you have silos, you have public sector, you have private sector, you have different hospitals which are not speaking to each other. So when you're a patient, and as a patient, you move from one place to the next, if the information, every time you have to keep on giving the same information, it is a challenge. So we have many issues which have come from this fragmentation. And you know, going to teamwork, I would love to see um, where private sector have the ability to do things faster um, and more innovative because they don't have the same bureaucracy, they can move quicker. But then public sector have a lot of things as well. So my question is how do we work truly together so we actually can do things for ourselves. We don't need to go elsewhere um, and get someone else to do it, but we can figure it out. 
I just want to create a little bit of controversy. Sure. I don't know if you're going to help me answer <laughs> this because I'm a man of controversy. You know? I just want to know, yeah, when it comes to Africa, even our own ministers, presidents, I mean head of states, mm. don't trust our medical system for mm. the fact that they have to leave the country, go abroad and thinking that they're going to get the best medical system. Mm. Mm. Do you think that there should be a reverse maybe we need to start like doing stuff in here they should stop going out there mm. you don't think something needs to be done to prevent these things from happening i mean it's it's one it's so key trust trust is so easy to break but so difficult to build and one thing is that i, I think that in the past people have had lots of issues with our healthcare system um, and it has failed a lot of people i won't lie but actually, if we stay there and say that just because of the past, things don't change, then we are lying to ourselves. And we need to actually, the question is, how much are we invested mm. in being a solution to the problem? Um, at, the, at the end of the day, someone has got to fix it. And so, you know, we in Ghana, we here in Yahoo are part of the solution. People will come to us and they have challenges. And what we are committed to doing is figuring out how do we meet it. So right now, for example, we just launched our new Natal ICU. Um, it's a partnership with GE, but we have the state-of-the-art equipment. We have the expertise, which is the critical care nurses. We have pediatricians. What we're trying to do is build international partnerships whereby um, a neonat neonat neonatologist, so someone who's a specialist in cardiology, in very, very small babies. I mean, how do we connect that person to someone in Ghana so that you don't need to travel outside, but you can get the best of both worlds. So digital is key for us. And so going to the issue of trust, trust is not going to change now. It's going to take time, but it starts with everyone actually saying we're going to stay and become a part of the solution mm -hmm. um, instead of actually leaving for someone else. I, I'm just going to continue again by saying that we have to say to be part of the solution. You were living in the UK yeah, yeah. as a medical doctor. Yeah. You came back here. Mm. Definitely, you left a lot of African medical doctors in here. Yeah. <laughs> if you should advise your fellow brothers and sisters, I mean, even especially Nigerian doctors mm. in America, there are a lot. Mm. If you should advise doctors like that, what would that message be? You know, if I was to advise, it's, it's tough because I can't, I mean, everyone has their own. But actually, one thing I, I wish I was told, mm. I wish I was told that, you know what, if I don't come sooner, I can't be part of making the system that I want to create. When you work in the UK, you are within a system. You are a clog within a wheel, and it takes time for you to build your, your, your name. You do lots of audits, you do lots of papers, you do lots of research. But if you think about it, Ghana has so much need that actually, if you are young, recently qualified, this is the time to come back because it's not going to be easy, but actually if you can use the same methodology and build something, well, that is something no one can take away from you because you, you helped build it. And so we have people like Prof from Pong Boating who um, opened the cardiothoracic center in Kolobu. He came back and he actually committed. That's just one story. How do we create many stories like that? So my encouragement, I wish someone had said to me, um, go, get the knowledge, get the skills, come back and build. Um, and I think that would have, it would have helped me to be a bit more intentional when I went. Um, it's not easy, I won't lie, but it's possible. Everyone is talking about Nyaho Clinic. It's my first time in here, and I want to know what really goes on in here. Mm. I mean, like, who are the patients that you guys expect to come in mm. here? And um, what should people expect? You mm. know? No, it's, it's a great question. I mean. Our, our patients actually come from all walks of life. Um, we probably see a lot of people who um, need specialist care. And so um, we have actually done a lot of work to make sure that we can meet the, their needs. So we have um, most of our clinics will be a combination of um, specialists different from, you know, child medicine to ops and gynae, to neurology, to cardiology, to ENT. So that covers a lot of the need. The need. But we also have um, a lot of young people who are starting off in life. So, you know, they're just getting their first pregnancies, um, they're working and they have infections. So we see those people who are working. And so a lot of companies work with us. We work with a lot of insurance companies. 
And then you also have then the babies who are born here. Um, we've got some amazing um, you know, staff who have, a, we have a mother and child unit um, and uh, we have a new neonatal ICU. So you know, when, peop when babies are born preterm, we're able to actually cater for them and make sure that they're, they're safe. Um, and then the last thing is obviously end of life. Um, you know, we have a lot of people who unfortunately have um, you know, either old age or chronic disease like cancers and there's nothing that can be done. Um, what we've started to do is a palliative, you know, trying to make sure that there's dignity in that time of life as well. So we cover the whole spectrum, um, but I think our core competence is to try and be that one-stop shop. Um, and then hopefully, if we can't do it, we try and connect you to places that do. Wow. So people will come here and then we hopefully sort them to where's the best place. Look, I want to know, do you believe that Africa is the future? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Actually, um, Africa is the future. Um, every statistic around demonstrates that we have the youngest population. But I think that what makes Africa the future is actually that we have people who are like giants emerging from sleep. Um, and I, I, I think it, it's whereby if you think of what we can achieve, um, we've gone through so much. Our history is rich. Um, but actually, when we changed our identity from being ones who were colonized, mm. who were lower than, to ones who can actually have an impact, I think that is when Africa will arise. But it will need a lot of work. Um, and I think that the discipline, it's not just a dream. And I think that people like you who are working diligently at their craft, it will need a combination of people waking up mm -hmm. and then people saying, you know what, there's work to do, let's be disciplined and do it. And I think that together, Africa will definitely be the future. Thank you, Doc. I'm not going to let it go, but just, just let me know, yeah, your father built this 50 years ago. And yeah. since you came into, um, how do you call it, since you took over, have you done anything? I mean, are you just using this one or you have another branch or anything that you've done? Uh, have I? Value uh, what your father uh, have, have I just come and squandered <laughs> and it all? all the money, you know? No, no, not at all. Actually, it, it, I, I see it as a privilege mm. and it's an honor because obviously um, my father built a foundation and that's the foundation which we're building on. Mm. So we started off with one site at airport, mm. and now we actually have a site at Accra Central, which is our octagon branch. Mm. We just um, finished a deal with the IFC, which is to open a branch in Tema, mm. then another in Takradi and Kumasi. So we're wow. definitely on a growth journey. And then let me not forget digital. So when I came in 2015, the entire organization moved to a digital platform. Wow. Um, and we're doing that even more so. So we're playing around with artificial intelligence. Mm. We are working with a number of entities around the world, trying to look at how do we do this? How do we understand the new age of technology in healthcare? So that's exciting for us. Um, and um, I'm very proud of our team, very proud of our people. So it's not been me alone, it's been a team. And I think it's, we're definitely proud. Thank you so much for talking to me, darling. Thanks a lot.